Hi, I'm Alex. This is Pucks and Paperbacks and welcome to my top 10 books of 2023. I read 80 books in 2023 and I decided to just narrow it down to a list of 10, but I will be having a bookish survey I'll be filling out and talking about all of the books that I read. So if you're interested in that, feel free to hit subscribe and turn on my post notifications so you don't miss that video. And if it's already up, I'll have it linked in the cards for you. And now to my top 10 books of 2023. This is in no specific order, but they are the top 10 books that I found most memorable this year. Starting with number 10, Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I loved this. It was disturbing. It was creepy. It made me sick to my stomach and it was a phenomenal read. I read it through audiobook, but I do have the physical copy and the audiobook was fantastic. I could not eat while I read this. And after I finished, I was just blown away. If you ever read a book and at the end you're speechless, that's exactly what this did for me. It was so engaging and I enjoyed it so much. Set in 1950s Mexico, this is a gothic suspense novel set at a mansion and I was just blown away by this book. My cat Leo is a live audience member so you might hear him in the background. Number nine is Warrior Girl on Earth by Angeline Bully and I read this in my video collaboration reading the Goodreads Choice Awards finalist. I had the young adult fiction category and I'll link the video up here for you if you missed it. I loved Warrior Girl on Earth. I need everybody to read Angeline Bully. Even if you don't read YA, she does such a fantastic job of writing young adult fiction and adding the suspense. This is the companion novel to her debut novel, Firekeeper's Daughter, which I loved. I believe this is four years later and we're following one of Donis's nieces, Perry. And she is fierce and determined and I love her as a character. This was so great and it talks about hard topics and important topics. Hello, I'm jumping in to give you the rest of the books because the footage ended up corrupting. So here I am. I loved Warrior Girl on Earth. I think everybody should read it. Warrior Girl on Earth was one of the best mysteries that I have read this year besides another book that is featured in this list. But I just love Angeline Bully. Set over the summer, Perry is at a tribal summer camp and she has to do an internship in order to pay back her Aunt Donis. And she doesn't want to be there. But as she she stays longer and learns from her mentor. She learns a lot about what the museum actually is there for. She ends up learning about NAGPRA, which is Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act. And this whole book talks about repatriation and getting ancestors back. I thought that this was phenomenal. It also talks about MMIW, which is Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women. Do look out for the trigger warnings before reading this one, but I thought it was fantastic. Next is a YA contemporary, and this is a and obviously by Becky Avertali. A lot of the books that I read for my Goodreads video actually made it to this list and I'm really surprised by that. This was such a great YA contemporary talking about queer baiting. We're following Imogen who is questioning her sexuality but she doesn't have a lot of support around her and she feels like she is overstepping because of the rhetoric that her best friend Gretchen is spewing. I said in my review that Gretchen is Twitter discourse if it were a person. I just love this so much. I think it is Becky's best book and you can tell that it came from the heart. It also has a romance and I just loved it so much. I am so glad that this book exists for queer teens. Next is another queer YA contemporary and this is Kiss and Tell by Deep Karam. This was actually my first book of 2023. I ended up getting it from the library and there was a dollar in there. And when I opened Kiss and Tell by Adib Karam, there was a dollar in there, which I've never experienced before. And I just didn't know what I wanted to read for my first book of the year. And that was fate. I just think that this book is magical. This is another book that talks about teens and queerness, especially in the music industry. We are following a group of boys who are friends and they are a boy band called Kiss and Tell. They're from Vancouver. I say they're a little similar to Big Time Rush and they like hockey. Our main character, 
Hunter. He is a former hockey player. He had to stop due to injury and he is just a hot mess. He is dealing with a breakup that goes viral. He's dealing with pressure from his agents and management. It talks about white privilege and how queer teens, especially boys, are treated in the music industry. This talks about fetishization and feminization of gay men and I just thought this was amazing. If you like mixed media, it has that, but I just thought that this was fantastic. If you're like me and you like books that feature fake dating, boy bands, and talk about queerness, especially having bigger discussions, I highly recommend this book. It's amazing and everybody needs to read it. Next is another book that I read for the Goodreads video and this is The Davenports by Crystal Marquis. This is a YA historical romance set in the 1910s inspired by the Patterson family who were a black family that grew to wealth due to their car company and with the Davenports they gained their wealth through their carriage company and this book focuses on all of the women in the Davenports family and we also have perspectives from the maid and her family and we also get to see the romances that bloom. I loved this because we see so many different perspectives and I loved seeing the girls personalities and just getting to know them as characters but also the end result at the end and I like to read romance so I enjoyed getting to see how each romance came to be and how it bloomed and what the aftermath was towards the end. This is a duology I believe so I'm actually really excited to read the next book. I really enjoyed this one. Next is The Do's and Donuts of Love by David Jagadar and I loved this. I am a sucker for books that are set during baking and reality TV shows. This is following Shireen who recently broke up with her girlfriend Chris and they are about to both star on the first ever junior Irish baking show and what I loved is Shireen has anxiety and I loved getting to see her anxiety behind the scenes. I think this did a great job of showing the behind the scenes of what a reality show could be like. I have read books that are set on baking shows before but I don't believe I've ever read one that's YA and I think that this was really special because it is sapphic. It talks about breakups and anxiety but also cultural appropriation and I just really enjoyed this. Adiba Jagadar is one of my favorite YA writers and I thought it knocked it out of the park. It was awesome. I liked that we talked about breakups and Shireen's anxiety. The behind the scenes was great. I felt like I was really on the show with her and I liked the little incorporations of the families getting to watch the show but also a romance blooming and how Shireen deals with that, especially with her ex being in close proximity. I just love Adiba Jagadar and if you've been wanting to get started reading her, I highly recommend this one, but I also really loved The Henna Wars. Next, I'm switching it up with a memoir and if you've been watching my channel in 2023, this probably won't come as a surprise. This is Amateur by Thomas Page McBee. I read this in my video where I read Elliot Page's book recommendations and they killed it. This is everything I've needed. It spoke to me on an emotional level as a trans man. This is a memoir about a trans man who starts boxing to get in touch with his masculinity and I love the way that it talks about masculinity being a trans man and in Thomas's perspective he talks about being a stealth trans man who passes as a cis man and just about how different it was for him to experience masculinity in a way that he hasn't before and I just loved it so much. This is the type of book that I just needed. In my video I mentioned how this is a book I wish I had at the beginning of my transition because it felt like an older brother giving me advice. Next up is one of my new favorite authors, Queer Principles of Kit Webb by Kat Sebastian. I was sleeping on Kat Sebastian and you can all throw tomatoes at me in the comments because I was sleeping on this author and I am going to read all of her books. I am determined because this is awesome. 
It is a historical romance between two men. There is a heist, there is banter, and I love this, especially the conversation about disability. Kit is recently disabled and he is learning throughout the book what that means for him and he's learning to accept help. I thought this was awesome. If you love A Grumpy Sunshine, I highly recommend this. It was awesome and I cannot wait to read more of Cat Sebastian's work. At number two is The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. I talked about this a lot this year and I loved it so much. I didn't think I was going to love this as much as I did. I did read the audiobook and I love this because it is a neurodivergent romance and I just loved how healthy it is. I think that is my main takeaway from this book and why I loved it so much because it just made me feel seen. It was just so great to read two neurodivergent queer men who are in a healthy relationship. I loved seeing that. Their representation is so important. Dave lives with clinical depression and Charlie has OCD and anxiety and I just loved this so much because of that representation. It was the fact that they both ask each other what they can do when they're having a bad day and I just think that that goes a long way. It was just so refreshing to read these two and I need more. I really do. I really hope we get more. If you're like me and also loved this book, I just did a reading vlog where I read the novella A Charmed Christmas, so I'll link that video up here if you would like to watch it. Anyway, I love this so much and I'm going to be screaming for everybody to pick it up. Especially if you love books that have mental health rep, this was great. It's also set on a reality TV show and I just loved it so much. And at number one is Promise Boys by Nick Brooks. This is the best YA book of 2023. Besides Warrior Girl on Earth, this one takes the cake. It is phenomenal. I loved it so much and I need more people to hear about it. This is a mystery between three boys at this all boys prep school who are accused of the death of their principal. And the way that this book goes about all of the different topics of living in poverty and how each boy is accused and the way that they are resilient and stand up for themselves is awesome. This was such a great mystery and I need everybody to read it. I also have a reading vlog for this so I will link it up here or down below. Everything I mentioned will be down below and I want to hear from you. What are your best books of the year? What was one of your favorite books that maybe you think I would like? I would love to know in the comments and if you're new here feel free to hit subscribe. I talk all about queer and trans books on this channel so if you like that I would love for you to join me. I'm almost to 3k so I really hope we can get there. That has been my goal for the last couple years and and I'm hoping that I can hit it soon. Or if you're just popping in and you enjoyed this video, feel free to drop a like. It really helps out this channel when you do so. My next end of the year video will be a survey. I'll be going over a bookish survey and sharing all of my stats, my goals for 2024, and some books that I enjoyed that didn't make it onto this list. That is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and for all of your support in 2023. I cannot wait to make fun content in 2024 and I'll let you know more about that in my next video. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.